Oh my gosh. Guys, guys, do you feel that? You feel those tremors? You know what that is? It's some seismic activity. Boom! <laughs> you can throw rocks in your, and send your hate mail now. So, this thing dry is 16,405 pounds. She's a big girl with a heavy hitch weight. And we're basically pretty much exclusively dually country in one of these. But there's reasons for it. This is not made to be weight sensitive. This is not made to be price sensitive. This is made to be loaded with just all sorts of craziness. It is a luxury fifth wheel, not a toy hauler. It just happens to have a garage tacked onto the back of it. There's a difference and you're gonna see what I mean as we go. When you're in transit with the slides closed, like we have them right now, you can still get to your bathroom. You can actually get to both bathrooms, the bath and the half. Um, you can get to, uh, I mean, look how beautiful this is. I love the look of this. We'll get back to this in just a minute. But this model is really not intended to be used uh, with the slides closed. This is a uh, get there, set up shop, take a break, relax, have a good time kind of model. So we'll get the slides open, let you see her in full effect. The thing with the seismic, is there's a lot more than meets the eye. This is not a casual glance product, and this is not just a, a generic casual RV purchase. This is this is a, a big long-term purchase, like, hey, this is the last one we're ever gonna own kind of thing. They've done so many things that are easily missed in here, that are high dollar, high value, long-term use ownership items. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time necessarily talk about all the insulation packages and stuff um, from uh, Jayco's Eagle HT series and up. Jayco is 0 to 100 degree rated and they have among the very best of tested proven data. In this category, at this price point, um, there is no one else building a coach remotely like this that actually publishes their testing data. So that should give you a clue that there's no one else really stacking up against this. But uh, we'll, we'll come back to the kitchen in a minute. But I mean, every possible ounce of space is utilized. Maximum height slide. I don't even know how tall that is. It's got to be close to like seven and a half, eight foot tall. Now, little detail things are easy to miss too. So not only do you have the indirect lights up here, but this is a soft touch liner. And what that's doing is when you're sitting in the slide, it's a noise dampener. So that when you're sitting in the slide, you're not hearing the ambient noise of the campgrounds of outside or whatever. But you know what? If you feel like it, you sure can see them with these just ridiculously sized panoramic windows all the way around this. And I love that they're on the door side of the camper. I can look at my site. I can look at my adventure. I'm not looking at the coach beside me, behind me, next to me. Now, when you are just kind of chilling out, one of the cool things here is this, uh, they have an extended slide. This is a bigger slide than a lot of similar layouts. And you can tell because they have a bigger couch in here. Now, your end seats, uh, they are, uh, I mean, you've got all the power toys in the world on this thing. You've got, uh, like, open clothes, heat massage, you've got lights in the cup holders, you've got a little bit of everything. It can do a little bit of everything. Now, your middle seats, they are uh, the same, and I have them open in different ways here. Your middle seats, the back can flip down to create these nice little armrest consoles with dual household and USB plugs per seat. And they also have their own manual ripcord style reclining, and though they're wall huggers, so they won't gash up the walls. There is LED lighting under the length of the sofa if you're looking for accents. You need 110 power to operate that, however, so that's why I don't have it on. I'm only on 12 volt currently. I'm dry camping effectively. You have removable tables. You can plop down in front of these, but I love that they recessed the table mount so that they're not up where you're going to trip and, and, and kick them and all that. All of our shades throughout, you're going to find dual section, day, night, like diesel pusher shades. So if you want to blot out the sun, you can. If you just want to take the bite off the uh, the sun, you can. But remember, these are 80% UV tinted windows. These windows are kind of like the tree in my neighbor's backyard. Um, she can't see me in that tree, but I can see her through it. It's, it's kind of like that. Um, <clears throat> moving on. Anyway, so the loft up top actually wraps all the way around behind those cabinets. It's this big, giant wraparound loft bed up there. Now, what's cool is you can use it as a bed. You can also use it as an attic. It's an amazing storage location. Your entertainment center is ridiculously huge. You're literally inches. I mean, I guess everything is, I mean, we're literally inches from the moon, depending on how many you count. But we're, my point is we're very close to a ridiculously sized giant Fury on TV. But what's kind of cool here is they also make it capable of um, swinging out for even easier crazy access. Above here, 
you can see how deep the overhead cabinet space is. It's not just the illusion of cabinetry. And on our entertainment unit, we, not only do we have multiple zones for our different speaker segments, usually uh, front cabin, rear cabin, outside, something like that, but we also have streaming friendly uh, faceplate on this with an upgraded chipset uh, where you can plug in like a streaming Chromecast or Roku stick and power it right off the face of this unit. Now, speaking of entertainment, this thing has amazing whole house entertainment with a total of 12 speakers throughout the coach. So uh, no matter where you're at, you can get, you know, excellent sound quality, a lot of, uh, you know, keep an eye on the movie or whatever you're watching. It can do all of the things. We'll come back to the kitchen in a minute here. I do want to take a quick step back to the garage. Um, so the 4114 has a 14. 15 foot garage, ladies and gentlemen. That's one of the first things I should have mentioned on this. I can't believe it took me this long to get to it. But that's the problem with the seismic. It has too many big, fun, like best in class things to talk about. I never really know where to start. Now, if you've seen one of these Happy Jack bed sofa lift combos, you've seen them all. But the way they've handled their air conditioning is different here. This has now it's optional now it comes standard with dual 30 uh, or pardon me dual 15,000 quiet cool air conditioners so standard as a 30,000 BTU uh, quiet cool system we've added a dedicated third 15,000 BTU air back here the coach has a total 45,000 BTU air system and on 50 amp service it can run not just the fan but the compressor on all three units simultaneously now in one of my previous videos, in a Keystone Fusion, which is another beautiful coach, I made a big deal and mentioned how they were the first to do it. And it turns out I was wrong. And thank you, viewers. I'm serious about this. Thank you, viewers, for correcting me on that. Shame on me for not knowing that sooner. Um, that is totally, totally on me and my fault. I am man enough to admit when I make mistakes. And I even put a little correction video out there about that because it really bothered me. Because, I, I mean, I stressed it, and I, I want you guys to know that I am all about giving good, accurate, genuine information. So when I had that big miss, you pointed it out, and I thank you for it. The seismic here was literally, they, <laughs> that all being said, they actually were the first to do it. And it's actually really funny. They don't need a fancy pants power management system. The way they do it is the air conditioners have a rolling delayed start. So you turn on the central air system, air one kicks on, waits a little bit till the amperage dies down because it's the startup spike that causes the problem. Then air two, then air three, if applied, like we've done here. So uh, we are all washer dryer ready. Um, we are actually on an interesting, this is, Jacob's about the only one to do this. They were the first to do this. This I know for a fact. They have an extra thick laminated insulated garage floor. And they do that because of the insulation. Because you can't fully enclose and force air heat a garage like you can a main deck floor. So our main deck flooring uh, in this big wide body beauty, that's why there's a little step up right here. Because there's actual subfloor assembly going on your uh, 12 inch on center aluminum 2x3 floor studs that is not taking place back here. Now... <clears throat> We've got uh, 5,000 pound rated D-rings that are actually welded directly into the chassis effectively. Uh, so you could, uh, you could have an ATV or a, a Polaris 1000 or whatever on this thing and flip it upside down. And the, the floor is going to hold, which is cool. Big windows in here for lots of light, lots of airflow, and of course you can pull those down. But I like that they didn't go with the cheap snap-on shades. They're effective, but they went with something that feels a lot more residential. Because what is this? What did I say, guys? This is a residential RV... Uh, a luxury RV, really, that just simply happens to have a, uh, a garage on the back. Now, I almost called this a half bath, out of habit, because off the back of garages of toy haulers, you often have a half bath. But it's not, is it? It's a full bath. This is a two full bath coach. And that is an outstanding quality. The extra width, I think they have uh, the widest doors if... if Anyone has a wider door short of an open concept toy hauler, I want to see it. Maybe somebody matches that, but I'm not really aware of it. Now you see we've got the uh, three seasons sliding panel wall door here. And you can kind of see how there's actual little um, panels you can unzip if you just want to get airflow through the screen or if you want the UV tint and no airflow. You can positive latch lock this to kind of keep some wind out and walk right out onto your power patio gate system. We'll talk about that more when we get outside because that is a cool feature. Moving forward, all right. Talked about the loft, talked about the living. We're going to talk about the kitchen. This is not going to be my shortest video, I can tell. So, 
as soon as people walk in, <clears throat> they always go, ooh, this just feels more, I don't know, solid than other things, and you're not wrong. And what you're seeing and feeling is the material selection here. And you might not consciously understand the difference, but even a person who doesn't have the level of training I have can walk into this and go, there's something going on here. So allow me to explain, ladies and gentlemen. They have some of the craziest, biggest, thickest, heavy dutiest cabinet doors I've ever seen in a coach. You can see it is wood. This isn't particle board that's pressed together. This is a big, thick one piece hardwood door, not a framed hardwood door with a raised panel. The whole flipping thing is one big chunk of hardwood with uh, hidden hinge doors. They are heavy. They are solid. They are built to last. You can actually see the, the hidden hinges. They actually want to keep these big heavy doors closed. Really important right here where the, they could actually open behind the slide flange and transit, but you don't see that happen. So, look at the detail stuff. They put the little strut or the little uh, hold back on here so it doesn't smash into the door. But you've got floor to ceiling, easy access, extra wide pantry going on here. Are you going to need a two or three stepper to get up there? Yeah, probably. But the point is, it has storage. You're not going to put your everyday stuff like forks up there, you know. All of our uh, woodwork up here, again, all hardwood. Um, the standard refrigerator is a 21 cubic foot uh, gas only refrigerator. And one of the things that we have found here at Halet RV is that the service records on gas electric refrigerators we have found to be vastly uh, superior. Additionally, gas electric refrigerators, God forbid you ever need work on them, an RV service center can actually work on them. Uh, electric only refrigerator, only like the Dometic or Whirlpool or Samsung Tech can work on it. And their shop, I don't know if you noticed, it isn't exactly situated to be able to accommodate uh, a gigantic monstrosity of a beautiful luxury fifth wheel like this in their driveway. So what do you have to do? Well, not every one of those things can actually go out the door. Sometimes you literally would have to take out a window to get the residential fridge that needs work out, get it back in, don't break stuff. Well, my point is, we like this fridge. It's a little more travelers friendly. It's a little more off the grid friendly. Now this obviously has a generator that can run anything in the coach, but the point is, you don't necessarily have to the whole time. And this is just better proven, more reliable. It's it's what we believe in. It's what we stand on, guys. Uh, big convection microwave, big residential size, cook up meals in a hurry. Now these are, cook faster and they introduce less heat in the coach. And look at this residential glass work uh, back here, uh, your backsplashes. That is beautiful. It looks awesome. It's actually got some nice three-dimensional wavy texture to it. We've got our Corian countertops. And if you notice this bar top right here, that is a like chef grade rated uh, preparation hardwood block, basically. Uh, the I, I haven't tested it, and I don't know that I have the guts to test it, guys. What I am told, and please do this at your own cautionary discretion, I'm told you can take hot pots or pans or something off the stove, and you can set it here, and it'll be fine. Again, I don't know that I have the guts to do it. I know that I'm told that you can. But I love how they tied it into these beautiful swing-out stools. Um, you see something like that, you know, kind of similar in our Fusion product. But it makes sense because, these, you know, this, the Fusion, they're both really high-end, very glitzy, jazzed-up products that go way, way further than what you typically find in the market, you know. This is not the bulk of the market. This is, uh, I mean, you're buying this for the luxury, for the pride, for the long-term ownership, for the heavy-duty construction. Jayco having double the warranty should speak to that. Um, I love the little LED accent lights under here. You've got full drawers under the refrigerator and the stove. They don't waste anything. They utilize every square inch of space they could. As I wrap around, you can see more of that big, full cabinet space. Nice big spots for waste baskets and things down here. Just awesome what they're doing. And plenty of full extension drawers right where you want them, right where you need them. Fork, spoons, knives, all your utility stuff. And these cabinet doors match those cabinet doors. They didn't ever cut the corner. Look at the, just even the accent lights above there. So LCI One Control, you can get the One Control app free off your Android or iPhone app store. Anything it can do on this pad you can do off your phone. And I've got a video coming out showing you exactly how that works, but even operating the leveling. Um, the rear power door, you can have your phone in your pocket and you can literally raise and lower the, uh, the, the garage tailgate on this thing or the slides. 
What's cool though, guys, is uh, being able to operate the leveling off that control pad. If you are backing your truck up to the fifth wheel and you didn't successfully or forgot to set the programmable hitch height memory off of uh, your your phone, you could sit there with remote control and raise and lower the front of the fifth wheel so that you can get hitched up without having to hop in and out and in and out and in and out. And you don't have to worry about the person behind you going, yep, up, down, no, wait, what? You don't have to deal with any of that because that's annoying. It's annoying just hearing me do it. Imagine the other person yelling at you. So I, I bet 20% of couples who can't get divorced just trying to hitch up. <laughs> anyway, nice hidden away master control panel for all your little buttons and bells and switches and everything. Cargo bed control here so the kids can't kill each other. That's, that's a good thing. Speaking of not dying, we'll talk about that some more in just a minute. Now look at this. Adjustable pantry shelving, or it can just be removed to have a nice little entry door coat closet. Nice little touches. Um... Central vacuum system, the electric dust pan, all those critical things are all handled. Their screen, their, their entry door is different. They don't put a screen door on here. Instead, this whole window panel opens for airflow, or you can just pull it down for privacy. <coughs> yeah, this is going to be a long one. Holy cow. Bathroom. Notice something different immediately? The whole decor changes in here. This is the smallest room in the RV, and smaller can uh, can feel even smaller with a dark decor, so they immediately brighten the decor in here. And that might throw some people off, but let me ask you, does the bathroom in your house match the living room? Chances are it does not. So why should it, you know, in here? Remember, this is intended for, you know, near residential type use. This is a luxury coach first. So it makes sense this is different. Now, detail stuff. Same solid surface countertops in here that you have in the kitchen. Recessed stainless sink. All kinds of big open storage below. We've got all sorts of leg room around here. Notice that one piece uh, seamless molded uh, plumbing recessed shower right there. That is, uh, for a big guy like me, I can jump stomp in that thing, never damage anything. All sorts of uh, towel and linen space down to the floor. <laughs> you, they didn't waste anything. And even just because, I think just because they could at this point, like, forget it, just go nuts, man. Double skylight. Double skylight, brother. Moving on. Big hefty door here, too. Okay. Bedroom. Every room in this has one switch for all your high-intensity lighting, and dang it if that doesn't make a heck of a difference. Full walk-in height up here. No step up around the bed. Notice the whisper-ducted AC up here in the bedroom. Standard! full overbed storage, but notice how they're putting nice little radius work on everything. So if you sit up, you don't gouge your shoulder on anything. You're not going to bash your head because it all radiuses away from you, but you still have nice side stands. And if you notice, take a look at this. Those are uh, uh, an upgraded uh, top as well. So you could set a, a drink over here, and if it sweats a little, eh, no big deal. Now, obviously, you don't want to let something sweat all over the place and run, run dribble down the cabinetry, but the fact is it's not really going to hurt anything. Super CPAP friendly. And remember how I said we'd talk about not dying. If you camp in a seismic and you use a CPAP machine and you're dry camping, you will not die in a seismic. Because of the extra large inverter that they have on these, you can actually run. Um, there are specific outlets, like next to sleeping spaces. There's an outlet here. There's, I believe, a specific one in the garage. I'll have to double check which ones they are because I'm going off memory and it's been a little while since I read that sheet. But there are specific outlets that can run off 12 volt to power a 110 household appliance, such as a CPAP machine, if you are boondocking, like in a, a parking lot overnight on your trip. Um, 102 wide body and 60 by 80 queen bed means plenty of room to walk around these things. Big old bedroom windows for maximum airflow in here and a huge sliding closet. And I, I purposely left, this is the, the grill that goes with the outside tailgater grill that we'll get to in just a minute. Still in the box, fully encapsulated in this. That is such a good barometer of size. And notice again, they, they made the slide go down as far as they could, added extra drawers wherever they could. Big, tall, hanging storage and a cross breeze window. Fresh air from outside. Um, even TV directly across from the master bed because, again, at this point, why not? So we've already gone on, this section of the video was 18 minutes and 10 seconds. Imagine what we'll find when we go outside. So despite the time that we've invested in this, this video is really a surface examination of what a seismic brings to the table. To do this right, really right, we'd have to spend hours, two to three hours going through this thing. And uh, I just don't know that anyone has that kind of tolerance <laughs> to listen to my voice that long. I don't blame you. Anyway, so 
anytime we're talking Jayco anything, these guys have pretty much double the warranty of about anybody else. There's a lot of structural warranties out there. But you know, year two, year three, they actually generally don't always cover very much. Some structural warranties are fine. Some are uh, uh, pretty much a joke and they don't cover very much. And I've actually put videos out discussing the differences in warranties to help you understand that. But suffice to say, Jayco covers more things longer, not just structure, all of the things, like our central vacuum system, like our, our solar prep and all that. Now notice here, <clears throat> They have a fully separately insulated upper deck, the double-sided thermal foil, not the single-side hot dog paper. You know, they're going further. You can see there's actually a heat vent off the upper deck heat plenum, which will he heat this encapsulated compartment, which is separate from the underbelly's heated encapsulated compartment. And again, I think that's why nobody else tries publishing their testing data in, um, in comparison to Seismix, because nobody can match it in this category. There's plenty of other very nicely built, very well insulated fifth wheel toy haulers out there. Or pardon me, luxury fifth wheels with a garage going for my initial vernacular. But these guys seem to have done something best in class that no one has been able to top. Nor do I think they're even willing because of what it would require. That nose cap though, oh my goodness. Look at that thing. Does this just not have just a bad look to it? It just looks bad. I love that. I love that just really beefy feel to it. That nose cap and everything, which is funny. If you actually look close, the um, little brother Talon, it actually has the same nose cap as a seismic. But I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the, the paint, the way the graphics hit it. Dang, does that have a look to me. It even sleeves all the way over the nose. If you look up top, you notice how the, this cap sleeves over the roof line? It doesn't just meet the roof line? That's something Jayco Motorhomes do so that you don't have water penetration. They're doing that here, you know? It is way above and, and beyond normal expectation in this market. The ride and handling package, the bigger the coach gets, the more important that gets. So here, we've got one of the best ride and handling packages you've ever seen. The more ride pin box, I think is more appropriate on a big coach this size. Not only does it have forward to back shock dampening, it is the one that also has a measure of side to side shock dampening. And on a triple axle like this, you really can't do anything other than more rides shackle system because the uh, the Equiflex shackle system, the way it floats, actually doesn't really work on triple axles. So you want more ride with more ride marriage whenever possible. It's not that a more ride and, a, and an Equiflex is going to get you killed or nothing. It's just that this is designed to work in concert with the suspension system. A 5500 generator standard, you can fit up to six batteries in this sucker. That is awesome. If you are just going to go nuts dry camping, you can really load this one up. Now, notice something different. They don't pre-crack their fiberglass. That's because they have a way heavier upper deck construction on this. They've got a thicker box tube steel frame. They have flanges that stick out from that that actually support the upper deck sidewall in the exact same way you have outrigger supporting the lower deck sidewall down there. They build the upper deck just like the lower deck, but that's not normal in fifth wheel production, guys. That's why I point this out. Um, along with your insulation package, you've got your fully privatized docking center over here, your big water heater to give you maximum gallons per hour. And notice they're not using the magnet latches. They have found that if you slam the door and move around too much, Jayco's engineers test things more than anybody else I've ever seen. Um, that in theory, the door could fall. Now, I haven't really heard that be a practical thing, but I think Jayco doesn't even want to worry about it being a theoretical problem. So they strut the door so that they hold themselves in place. We are surrounded here with Jayco's vacuum laminated construction system. They're, they're, uh, they're <laughs> again, the, the amount of structure uh, in their lamination, if you could see the peel away, this is incredible. That's why we have the laminated slide walls. They went the extra mile there. Here's a big one, guys. Goodyear Beast Tires. There is nobody, nobody else using these. You cannot just take your existing toy hauler and add these tires to it. They literally had to redesign every single floor plan to expand the wheel wells to allow the room for these tires. They have the fastest speed rating of any tire in this category, 87 miles an hour. Literally the highest load rating of anything else out there. And you don't have to inflate them to like 137 PSI. 80 PSI, you can go to like any generic little stop and use a normal air pump. You know, you don't have to use something special. And again, 
on a triaxle, this is what you want to see. Moride compression rubber equalizing with a three inch shock dampening variance. Uh, dual separated 30 gallon fuel tank so that if you want to run a separate fuel for your generator or your toys, you can do that. Or what you can also do, guys, use the same fuel, and then if you burn up the generator, you can actually use this to cross pump over. They purposely do not bleed and flow through in case you want to use separate fuels. Santa Con's an upgrade we like to put on these. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the, the phrasing I've heard people use for it is the turbo crapper. That's my, my favorite term so far. But the, the hose, the handle, and everything's built right in. It's a power uh, uh, slurry exhaust macerator, basically. Sort of like a garbage disposal in your sink. It will break up the solid mass from your black holding tank and exhaust your black and gray tanks twice as fast, so you spend half as much time messing with that. The uh, this, this is amazing. This is the first I've ever seen these. And I've seen it on motorhome toy haulers, but never towable before. Maybe someone's done it. I'm not saying they're the first. They might be. I don't know. I've just never seen it. And that is that this has a power up, down, rear ramp door. You never have to deal with the weight of lifting this ramp whatsoever. Um, it takes, I think, about 60 seconds to actually go up, down on its own. But the fact is, so what? So if you just hit the button, big deal. You don't have to sit there and hold the weight of it. Jayco uses a totally different ram door from anyone else I've ever seen. And the way you can tell is because, one, they use a different patio system because they need to. But secondly, these radius doors. Everybody and their brother knows that a radius corner is structurally uh, provides more integrity than a 90-degree dog-eared corner. But they're about the only ones doing this, you know? They also put Asdell in that tailgate to help with weight reasons, even if you don't apply the power tailgate, which is an upgrade. This is a triple uh, patio awning system unit. You've got front rear split patio awning so that you're not wasting awning space over that big window slide out. And then you have a third power awning over the rear ramp area. And I love that they're including these steps for a quick easy up down, including also the handle. Now here's another option, and this is exclusive to the Jayco family of toy haulers, and that is the uh, tailgater outside kitchen. It actually is mounted right on the framework here and it actually rides off the back of the unit going down the road so it's it's mounted on the outside of the coach and it's just it's a cool way to be able to get a feature that normally you can't get in toy haulers it's got little open pocket spaces down here for various things you got your little cooktop up top even a little detail here where they put this little stopper on there so that you can't accidentally close it and knock a pot of boiling corn or something off that dad's medicine cabinet right outside how you doing girl even, you know, the door can almost function as prep space in and of itself, just the way that it lays flat. Um, side mount grill, that's where your grill would go right there. So you've got your grill next to your tailgate station. And here we've got the handy uh, barley pop accessorator. <coughs> How you doing? All LED tail lights and marker lights and all the lights and crazy walk-on magnum truss roofing system that's rated for 50% more than anybody else in this class. Already talked about the Goodyear tires. You can see the glossiness on the skin, the double the warranty, the wider entry door. I don't know what else. What else should we even talk about? There's so much going on here. <laughs> Jody over here says, talk about me. And actually, guys, let's talk about Jody. What's he doing right now? This is another new Jayco arriving. Jody is our first line of defense. He checks these things out to make sure on the surface everything's good. We pull them into the shop after that. We do a full appliance burn to make sure, again, that everything's in good working order. And then, when you come in and say, yeah, you guys, hey, let's, you're great, I want to take one of these home, we put everything through another full burn so that we've done everything we possibly can uh, to, to run it through a shakedown period to make sure that it's in good working order when it gets on your truck and heads to your driveway. That's what we do here for you at Halet RV. I need to wrap this up. You've probably muted me by now. If you're still listening to my voice, you must have me turned down very, very low. So <laughs> don't laugh at that, Jody. Come on, buddy. I did. <laughs> anyway, so guys, we do hitching pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, and everything in between. If you love this thing but you need a dually, we'll get you one. We might have one. You never know. We do package deals all the time. We just had a big pinnacle on F-350 leave here uh, the other day. So take care. Stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. But remember, the one thing we don't do is hidden fees. We leave that to the other guys.